suppression. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney, however, now challenging that account, saying that the people who really saved us from going over the cliff are some of the very men President Obama likes to blame for our economic woes. Listen here. There was a fear that the whole economic system of America would collapse, that all of our banks, or virtually all, would go out of business. And in that circumstance, President Bush and Hank Paulson said, we've got to do something to show we're not going to let the whole system go out of business. I think they were right. I know some people disagree with me. I think they were right to do that. They kept, I, I keep hearing the president say that he's responsible for keeping America for going into a Great Depression. No, no, no. That was President George W. Bush and Hank Paulson that stepped in and kept that from happening. So could we be seeing a new line of attack that he plans to use if he becomes the nominee? Joining me now, Kirsten Powers, a columnist at The Daily Beast and a Fox News contributor. And Mark Thiessen, a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush. This is interesting to me. It's new. And we don't hear that much new coming from these uh, candidates uh, these days. So he <laughs> appears to be gearing something up in case he becomes the nominee. Mark, I'll start with you on this. Is that true, sure. what he's saying, that President Obama is wrongfully taking credit for keeping us out of a Great Depression? It is absolutely true. I mean, President Obama can, cannot take credit for stopping the financial crisis because the financial crisis was effectively over uh, when he took office. Uh, the reality is there's, a, there's something called the TED spread, which is a measure that economists use to measure how much banks are charging each other for lending above the, above the uh, tr cost of treasuries. And the TED spread was the metric that the, uh, that the economists used to measure the financial crisis and the near collapse of the financial sector. It was way out of whack in October 2008. By the time President Obama took office in January 2009, the TED spread was basically back to normal, below one. And so the reality is President Obama cannot take credit for stopping another Great Recession because the risk of a Great Recession was over in January 20th, 2009, when he took office. Kirsten, can what he, he make that case? Can, can President Obama make that case? You know, that, uh, the opposite case, I should say, you know, that, than, than, than what Mark just made, saying that, uh, that the economy was still in a free fall and that somehow it was what he did from... from you know, the stimulus to cash for clunkers and so on that helped it. Well, I think both men get responsibility for it, and Obama's not giving George Bush responsibility, but I don't think that's, frankly, that surprising. <laughs> um, but definitely, George Bush <laughs> should get responsibility, you know, has some responsibility for that. However, for TARP, when for the Romney's, bailout of the banks. Yeah, absolutely, yes. I mean, that was critical. But what you need to remember is who opposed that. And when, he's, when Romney says some people don't like TARP, well, those some people are in the Republican base. So it's, it'll be interesting to see see how this plays out because it's not something that was particularly popular yeah. uh, with, with conservatives. They didn't like it and he is tacitly acknowledging the government intervention you know, can help the economy, which is something that Republicans have been arguing all along, is not necessary that you need to have the free market and let the free market take its course um, and not have government intervention. He's, he's ha he has to do this, Mark, because he's said openly that he supported TARP, the, the, the bailout of Wall Street, however you want to phrase it. Mm -hmm. He's on record sure. uh, as saying that. So now he's now he's making a different case, which is uh, I supported it and, it. and it was an accomplishment on President Bush's watch, not on President Obama's watch. And don't believe President Obama when he says it's the policies he, Barack Obama, backed that got us out of this mess. It was TARP. It was George Bush and Hank Paulson. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, he said that he would do things differently. He said that he would have rejected the auto bailout that the Bush administration did. He probably would have structured TARP differently, uh, he said. But this is the reality. We're conflating two different things. The financial crisis, which was what was what was possible to, what could have led us into a Great Depression, which was over by the time Barack Obama took the oath of office, and the economic recovery, which Obama was responsible for. His, he, what he inherited was a weak economy that was recovering from the, that needed to recover from the financial crisis. And he made that recovery longer slower and more painful than it had to be. The, the stimulus, which Kirsten mentioned, $1 trillion, was an abject failure. Obama said that it would, that it would stop unemployment for getting to 8%. We've had plus 8% unemployment for 36 weeks, which is the longest period since the actual Great Depression. Uh, and most economists will tell you that the debt that we've racked up, which is at record levels under the, under the Obama administration, the spending has actually slowed economic growth. We have the lowest uh, rate of GDP growth, lowest rate of uh, of income growth, the housing market is still is still in trouble, and all of this has happened on Obama's watch. So he inherited a, a, a an 
end of the financial crisis, and his responsibility was to bring us back from that, and he has failed at that. Kirsten, that's interesting. Investors Business Daily uh, produced a piece back in June of 2011, and they said economists were never predicting a depression, uh, and, and the president didn't stave one off either. That essentially mm -hmm. they said TARP did, and the, and the stimulus had very little to do with it. Well, but I think that there, first of all, you never know what is going to happen in the future. So I think there was a fear, definitely, that we could be spiraling into something really terrible. You know, a, another gr like Great Depression. Certainly, we've had a very bad recession. And I have to say, no matter how many times Republicans say that the stimulus didn't work, it's not true. Um, and, and every economist pretty much says that, including Mark Zandi, who was John McCain's economist, has said that we would have a much higher rate of unemployment had it not been for the stimulus. Did they make a strategic mistake in saying that um, unemployment wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go above a certain level? Yes, that was a mistake. That doesn't make the stimulus not successful. The economy is turning around. Most Americans believe the economy is turning around. Most economists believe the economy is turning around. Most business people believe the economy is turning around. So I think that Obama can take responsibility for that, and, and, and he is, and, and he rightfully should. Mark, the, that, this seems to be how it's going to go if, if uh, Romney yeah. becomes the nominee. He's going he's gonna to say the president gets no credit. He gets no credit for TARP because he didn't do it. And with respect to the stimulus, he gets no credit because the stimulus didn't get us out of this jam. Kirsten cites facts that President Obama will surely use. On the other side, I mentioned this Investor's Business Daily article. They say that the recession officially ended in June of 2009, and just 15% mm -hmm. of the stimulus money had even gone out the door at that point. They, they point out uh, that the monthly GDP had yep. stopped free-falling back in December of 2008, long before the stimulus even kicked in. Yeah, as Obama said, the shovel-ready projects weren't so shovel-ready. Look, the stimulus is a failure. There's a Stanford study which shows that most consumers put the money towards savings, and the states used it to put off uh, to, to borrow less. It didn't put money out of the door to get consumers and uh, businesses spending again. It just didn't work. And then after he passed the stimulus, let's not forget, what did he do? He'd spent the next two and a half years working on Obamacare, which, by the way, the CBO says will cost 800,000 jobs. And he then he had his famous pivot to jobs. Well, why did he have to pivot to jobs? two and a half years into his administration, it should have been his primary focus from the beginning. CBO. Mark, you, you know CBO the economy is turning around, around right? Go ahead, Kirsten. I'll give you a quick I, final I'm word. just curious. Like, you, do you know that the economy is turning around? Are you aware of that? Because you, you just keep going back into the past <laughs> and bringing up things like it, that it, happened years ago, but like can't acknowledge the fact that the economy is objectively turning around. I mean, this is not a matter yes. of opinion. Romney and it, acknowledges you keep going that the economy back is for, objectively turning And I just want to say around. that's not true what you said about the states. Actually, the states use the money to stave off um, having to get, ha having to fire people, actually. So people actually kept their jobs because okay. of the stimulus. No. So right, well, we'll leave There's it at that. I gave Mark the first word. I'm Taylor. giving Kirsten the last. Can... I got to go. You guys, great <laughs> job. Right, Thank you both so much. Well, it started as a run-of-the-mill town hall meeting. But what happened next?